Hello and welcome to this audio abstract. My name is Gavin Moyer and I'm here to talk about our article entitled Mechanical Limitations to Sprinting and Biomechanical Solutions. This article was written in conjunction with my colleagues at East Stroudsburg University, Scott Brimmer and Brandon Snyder, as well as Dr. Chris Connorboy at University of Pittsburgh and Dr. Hugh Lamont at Coastal Carolina University. So the purposes of this article were threefold. We wanted to review the literature and identify the mechanical limitations to straight line sprinting. We then wanted to identify the biomechanical solutions that the fastest sprinters use. And then the third and final um, purpose was to try and utilize the constraints led framework to allow us to implement effective resistance training methods to try and improve straight line sprinting speed. So the first thing that we got from our literature review was that Speed can be regarded mathematically as the ratio between stance distance and stance time, the ratio of stance distance to stance time. And what the literature shows is that the fastest sprinters tend to always produce the shortest stance time. So stance time and the production of short stance times appears to be a potent limitation to high sprinting speeds. But then we're able to identify um, specific mechanical limitations to the acceleration phase of sprinting as well as to the maximal speed phase of sprinting. So over here, we have an image showing the typical posture adopted when the athlete's accelerating. That posture is adopted because the mechanical limitation to accelerative sprinting appears to be the ability of the athlete to produce a forward directed ground reaction force. When the athlete approaches their maximal speed, what we see is their posture shifts to more upright uh, posture. And that is because the mechanical limitation to maximal sprinting speed appears to be the ability of the athlete to produce sufficient vertical force during those short stance phases. If we then look at the biomechanical solutions utilized um, for, if we start with the acceleration phase, the requirement for the forward directed force is um, produced by the utilization of this rotation extension strategy whereby the athlete first of all rotates the center of mass so it's ahead of the ground reaction force and here's the ground reaction force they've rotated the center of mass so it's ahead of the ground reaction force and then they get this forceful extension of the knee joint okay the other thing that contributes to this forward directed force is the forward rotation of the swing leg okay so they've got two things going on there for the rotation extension strategy and the forward rotation of the contralateral swing leg to produce these forward directed forces. Once the athlete is approaching their maximal speed and the mechanical limitation is now the ability to produce sufficient vertical force, now the biomechanical solution that's used by the fastest athlete is the impact limb deceleration mechanism. So what happens here if you look at the contralateral swing leg notice that the swing leg is being swung forward and up so we get this high knee lift these front side mechanics that coaches talk about. That allows the athlete then to punch the leg into the ground. Okay, Punch the leg into the ground to produce these large forces, these large vertical forces in a short period of time. So this impact limb deceleration mechanism requires that the athlete produce high hip flexor power output to rotate this swing leg up and forward. They then require a large amount of um, strength in the hamstrings group in order to um, initiate this active leg motion where the leg is going to be pulled down into the ground, back and down into the ground. Once the leg has made contact with the ground, they need to ensure that the leg remains stiff in order to produce these high rates of force development. And what we found was in the literature, these high leg stiffnesses were associated with joint stiffness around the ankle and around the knee being very high indeed. So what we then have is how can we use the constraints led approach to try and get a better idea of how we can implement resistance training methods to improve sprinting speed okay because the mechanisms that we've identified all seem to be related to the ability of the athlete to generate sufficient forces in short periods of time so the constraints led approach is common in skill acquisition and what it uh, posits is that movement patterns will emerge from the confluence of constraints surrounding the athlete so there are different constraints different categories of constraints We've got task constraints, those constraints associated with the goal of the task. There are environmental constraints, so those are constraints that are associated with the physical properties of the environment. And then we have what are called organismic constraints. Those are constraints related to the performer themselves. 
So these constraints are merely variables that um, set boundaries and limit the configuration of the motor system. So these constraints will allow certain movements to emerge and preclude other movements from emerging. What we were able to do is identify that the mechanical limitations during straight line sprinting, that is the four directed force during acceleration and the vertically directed force during maximal sprinting speed, those can be considered task constraints. The biomechanical solutions, the rotation extension strategy, the impact limb deceleration mechanisms, those can be considered coordinate structures. Now, a coordinate structure is a temporary organization of body and limb motions that will emerge based upon the confluence of constraints. And those coordinate structures allow the attainment of the task goal. Well, the, the coordinate structures, the rotation extension strategy, the impact limb deceleration mechanism, they are predicated on sufficient levels of muscular strength, muscular power, and leg stiffness. Well, all of those are organismic constraints. The best methods, training methods, to enhance those organismic constraints would be resistance training methods. So what we're trying to say here is that these biomechanical solutions, the rotation extension, the impact limb deceleration mechanisms, they will only emerge in the athlete once the athlete has sufficient levels of muscular strength, muscular power, and leg stiffness. And therefore, methods of resistance training should be included in the wider training program of sprinters. And so what we do is we finish off the paper by looking at the methods that we can use to select appropriate exercises and also we look at how we can develop a um, block periodized program um, in order to enhance sprinting performance given our understanding of the constraints led approach. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, my email address is gmoyer at esu.edu. If anybody has any questions, then please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for listening.